you, you get the um, presentation title already. It's how to get the best out of two things that on the first appearance might be competing um, on some degree, um, but it's our mission to resolve that um, situation. But um, two more words about myself. So I'm David, I've been introduced already um, from Comunado, Germany-based um, as well. Um, you got some numbers in here, I'm not going to read those. Um, uh, it's, I don't want to distract you from our actual content too much. Um, and this is going to be set up as a short presentation. I got a live demo as well. Um, hoping that works. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, you know, working in, in, in IT tools has one downside that everything stays typically in its own tool. Like if you do something in Jira, you can integrate it in Confluence, but it stays there um, outside of the Atlassian. It's difficult to get it there. Same for Confluence as well. Um, and I uh, just wanted to, oh, no, that was too fast, um, share that a study found, and it's, a, it's not the most recent one, but I guess the situation hasn't improved a lot since then, showing that um, a certain amount in this study, it shows 13%, use 11 or more syst IT systems in their day-to-day -day work. And I want to ask you, is there anyone here who uses less than 13 IT systems in your day-to-day -day work? Um, be it browser-based or whatever, I guess it's, it's quite common nowadays, and new tools are coming up every now and then, so a situation only, from some perspective, gets worse on that. Um, and we are here to try to solve that, because sharing knowledge is important. If you have things that stay in their own system, it's hard to find those if you don't know where to look. If, um, and it increases the effort that employees are having and finding the information, duplicate information is being produced, stuff like that. You all know that, I guess, from your day-to-day -day work. I don't want to spend too much on the um, actual pain. And this turns out to be a significant amount of work hours being, well, wasted by searching for stuff and searching for the right tools where things are in. Um, if this number is actually the one we are all dealing with, I don't know. Um, but it seems a lot, and I know from my personal experience that it takes time to find the correct tool to look information up. Um, but we're here to, like, building a bridge, um, or, say, a unified digital workplace, in this case, focusing on Atlassian, obviously, as you're all Atlassian users, I guess, and Microsoft or Office 365 tools, which, um, at least for our customers, almost everyone uses if they want it or not, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and even if it's just Microsoft Teams or so, you still use the suite itself, and there's SharePoint in the end as well and stuff like that. Um, and I'm showing you, I'm going to show you a way how to integrate that to um, combine the two. Um, and I have a screenshot here, but I don't want to uh, spend too much of it because I have a live demo showing exactly that thing just for the, I don't know, there's, there's likely going to be a, rep, a uh, recording and maybe the presentation will be shared. So there's some content here available. We say you can insert SharePoint documents and Confluence, but it's going to be much more interesting if I actually show it in a few seconds. Um, and it's even the other way around, which I'm not going to show um, to, due to time constraints mostly. We even have a way of integrating a lesson content into Microsoft SharePoint. Like if you use SharePoint for an intranet, which is a common thing nowadays or increasingly common thing nowadays, uh, but people still use their Atlassian tools for project management or day-to-day -day work because they are so much easier to use and work with, <laughs> as we would likely all agree. There's a way to integrate those into um, SharePoint as well. Um, I'm not going to demo that. If you're interested in that, um, let me know. I can have a, a more in-depth demo afterwards or in the next days um, due to time constraints. Um, so, um, yeah, maybe I'll just... I just Switch over to the uh, demo right away, and this should be that window. Oh, it's, oh yeah, seeing it. No, it, you're not. It's, ah, oh, the presentation is still shared. Um, that way it works. Though, no. uh, screen is being mirrored. What you're seeing here is a conference cloud demo that we're using as Comunado. Um, it's just a regular page. I got some stuff in there as a demo. It's being looking nice, and so, um, and you get some macros in here, and this is about creating a, organizing a summer party for our team later this year. 
um, because in Germany it's not as warm as here in Las Vegas yet. Um, so there's stuff like locations and to-dos, and there's an org team caring about things. Um, that's all up here, like a regular project status page or something like that. But if you scroll further down, you'll see some additional things, and I'll show you what that is. So first off, you have an Excel file, which is embedded here showing different catering offerings, which I'll, might be due to the screen size here, uh, but you can see it quite well, I guess. Um, might be a bit small, so I just open it in a separate tab, clicking on the title here, and it opens up. Jumping directly into the Excel web app in this case, and there you can see the whole um, document with, um, if you have uh, sheets and Excel, you can do all of that. And the interesting thing is um, the same thing is being embedded here in Confluence. You get all of the same controls. You can scroll in here. You have, if you have different sheets, they would, have, would appear down here, which we don't for this file. Um, and it's exactly looking as Excel as SharePoint is doing the rendering here. And same for other file types. We get an image in here, but it also works perfectly well for present presentations like PowerPoint, which I'm not sure we have one here below. Um, no, but I could, maybe I could just do that as a demo um, in, a, in a second. And then we, have, um, then we have a list of documents. Like, this is a single document, the catering offer, but it's living in the context of a broader project, and there are other documents that could be of relevance as well. And if I want to show that here to anyone interested in that project, um, I could just do that here and having different folders, which I could scroll through, and I'm just clicking on the catering folder, um, loading its content. And I guess further down below, there should be our Excel file. We've just been seeing got the same file name, though it's that I'm not going to open it again. Um, but you'll see, you, you see that here and can actually navigate the whole SharePoint content, or if it's been shared via Teams, like I have a Teams channel um, named like that, that would be those shared documents as well. And you can all do that without leaving Confluence at all, which is great. And even, even better, um, if you're working on things, uh, you either do straight away in the web app, like this one, but for other files, be it a zip file or any, I don't know, Adobe design stuff that your browser can't handle, um, you can download it and then upload it again. So there's an upload dialog and it lets you upload files directly to uh, SharePoint without the need to leave Confluence at all. But if you wish to do so, you could, you could by clicking here on that path, which I'm not going to do, but it takes you directly to the folder and you can like interact a bit more in depth with the files. But the interesting thing here I wanna share is how easy it is to include those documents. And I would say kind of, kind of fail proof and uh, everyone, everyone can do that. So editing, editing the page <coughs> gives you like an edit page and it shows all the stuff we got here at the top. And so you see there is the, um, separate macros, and they are within the edit mode, they're even rendered, so you see, get a kind of a preview. But let me just um, remove that here. Um, so go away, and re-add it again. So uh, what I'm going to do is um, add a new macro, and it's uh, conveniently called either SharePoint document or list, depending on the type of information you wanna include, and this kind, it's the document. Um, brings up a dialogue, and this is, I have to say, I'm pretty proud of my team for having such a great UX here, because it takes my user details into account. I, have, I need to have an active login session on the Microsoft site, and therefore it's possible to show me recently worked files for my account. So I've done something in whatever Teams or SharePoint, whatever document saved it, um, and it appears here as um, last access, so like obviously the Excel file that I just accessed is appearing on the top and everything else hasn't been accessed in a while as this is a demo system. <laughs> but I could also scroll through my personal OneDrive, like things I've been sharing just with myself or with individual people, or with um, any other SharePoint site, which is like a project space category within SharePoint, or would be a Teams channel as well. Um, and can navigate through all of that. Picking any document, and for the sake of not destroying my demo instance, I just choose the same thing again. Selecting it gives me a preview, preview in case there are similar name files. I can get a brief view if that is what I want to embed. I can show it as a link, 
which is uh, if I want to have a longer text around it, describing it, I don't need the preview, I can do that. In this case, I'll just use the full embed, insert it, and you see it's loading, and you will see the same thing as it was before again, which is super easy, and everyone can, everyone can do that. The only thing is you need to have access to information. Uh, there's no way to give access to that file to people by sharing the Confluence page that haven't had access previously to the file, so I'm not expanding any permissions or something like that working around. Um, I would certainly have to do that on the SharePoint side, which is actually what most customers will want to do anyways. Um, and there it is. So looking as before, now, um, if you're asking why would I want that, switching back to my PowerPoint again, maybe you can just... Um, I think that was the slide where we left here, right? No, it's not there. Why not? What's it? Okay, just taking a while. Well, um, <clears throat> so picking up where I left. Um, so why do people want that? Because they use Teams anyways, if they want it or not. They use SharePoint if they want it or not, because this is the uh, default storage location for files that Microsoft offers. Um, and the good thing is that our product is um, available for every kind of customer. It's for Atlassian cloud and data center versions available. It's available for SharePoint self-hosted or SharePoint online, like within Microsoft 365. And it's fully integrated with the Confluence Migration Assistant in case customers are in the process of migrating to cloud, which I heard many customers are doing. Um, so, yeah, which is a good thing. Um, if you want to learn more, you can try it on your own. If you need more than 30 days of a trial, which sometimes happens as well, um, that's possible as well. And you may be wondering, well, I've been talking about Confluence all the time, but the title was Atlassian and not just Atlassian Confluence. Um, and this is really hot news released like over the weekend, like literally today is the first working, I mean, in this time zone, the first working day, um, where people can try that is our new SharePoint connector for Jira, which is literally the same thing. It looks slightly different because Jira behaves in a different way as well. Um, but the use case we're covering is the same. There are a few things that are not available that will follow in the upcoming uh, weeks, which is like the SharePoint side, like the reverse embed, um, so something like that. But it's working in the same way in terms of permissions. It's as secure. It's going to be cloud fortified as well very soon, which is uh, just takes some time on the lesson side. And I got a, two more screenshots of that as well. So um, you get similar to attachments. You get view of... Um, connected documents with a preview, and you got a list as well, like similar to what we just um, saw in a different space because Jira looks differently. Um, and this is then actually my last slide. Um, even the dialogue of connecting uh, SharePoint files or Microsoft Teams files, which is SharePoint then in the end, looks so similar that if one customer is using one of those products, they are immediately familiar with the with the other one. Even for admins, setup is super easy um, in terms of technical setup, at least. I'm hearing that getting consent from a Microsoft admin might be more of a challenge within bigger organizations, but that's, I'm not sure we can tackle that <laughs> within the product. So um, thanks for listening. Thanks for um, Trying this out, if you want to, so it's available on the lesson marketplace. I, I mentioned that, right? Yeah, it's available on the marketplace. So, <laughs> um, got a well limited number of downloads because it's just been released. Um, but we're super stoked and excited. Um, try that out. Let me know if you have any additional questions. If you want to have an in depth demo of either of the two versions, um, or if you're having a, a specific customer situation that you are having in mind to either have the product or would benefit of that, hit me up or anyone from the Comunado team. You'll recognize us today and tomorrow by wearing those or similar T-shirts. Um, thanks for your attention. I think I'm within the time limit slightly. <laughs> yeah, thanks.